and welcome to another one of Mark's Whiskey Ramblings. Today is going to be a bit of a special rambling, a rather long rambling too, so you might want to pull yourself a dram, sit back and relax. As you can see, I've got here four bottles of Nucleon. You may remember that I did a rambling a few months ago in which I jokingly uh, taught you how to pronounce the name of the distillery by saying that you needed to pick a fight with a woman called Leanne. And then you'd go like, look, Leanne. All you had to do was replace the L of look and the L of Leanne with an N, and then you'd go, Nook Mian, and there you have it. That even had the people at Nook Mian chuckling for a couple of days as well. So anyway, uh, I would like to talk to you about Nook Mian some more today, and as you can see, I've got batch one, two, three, and four. Now I already talked about batch number one, remember? So I'm not gonna do that again. As you can see, it's quite popular here at the uh, Der Mill House. Uh, so is batch two, by the way, batch three, and batch four just arrived. And as we speak, batch five is underway. So you might think that Lubmin is very popular. It is. But of course, the fact that they release all these batches is because every batch is only 5,040 bottles strong. So hey, and I was wondering, since they are comprised of only 15 casks, might there be some batch variations? And if so, how big are they? So here I am trying batch number two, three, and four for you. If you want to go back to batch number one, I refer you to the previous whiskey rambling. So batch two, three, and four are also gold colored and always bottled at 46% ABV. Well, let's give them a go. Batch number two, three, and four on the nose. A bit sweet and sour. I get some pomelo, some nougat, hazelnuts, it reminds me a lot of batch number one, but it's a little, just a tad sharper, in fact. And a tad more sour. It's like, like some more citrus fruit in there. It's so lovely. Batch number three. Ah, that's very creamy and playful. Very fruity. And I even get a bit of wood shavings in here. Citrus, sweet malt. This is very similar to batch number one, which I really, really liked. Number four, then, on the nose. Creamy, rich, a bit of white pepper. The wood is there again, but I do get an extra sweetness here. Oh, this is definitely the sweetest of the four batches so far. This will do very well in cocktails, I think. Hold that thought. Oh, this is by far my favorite. Good nose. On the palate. Honey, grapefruit, hazelnuts, more citrus, very bright, a tad sour, bittersweet, that's the word I'm looking for, bittersweet. Batch number three. Caramel, oh, something minty, very fresh, very good, very bright, very fruity again, lots of citrusy notes, nougat, caramel, but that mintiness, beautiful, beautiful. And batch number four. A bit softer, less spicy than the previous batches. Oh, again, that extra sweetness that I had on the nose, I get on the palate as well. And all three of them do have this beautiful, medium long finish, a bit warming, uh, on citrusy notes. Nuts. Oh, this is so good. This is, Nukmian is, is, is clearly one of my favorite new single malts, as you can tell. I'm very enthusiastic about this. It's because it's, it's well, Nukmian is, it's, it's the whole package. They, 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 it's, it's, they've got a good story, a great young team, they're young upstarts. Um, they've got a lovely team, the, the, that green philosophy that they have, beautiful packaging, and of course, the most important part of all, they've got great whiskey. This is only three years old, but it's it's such a beautiful, beautiful, complete single malt in my opinion. Like I said, with a great story. So look, me and is one that I will be looking out for and I will be getting the other batches as well, because as you can see, we 
drink it quite often here at my place, uh, merely because aperitif is my favorite whiskey moment. So yeah, I aperitif every single day. But you will remember that I said that this batch number four, well, these as well, but batch number four would do well in cocktails. I, I, I am a true believer, so let's do that. Don't go away. What I'm going to prepare is a spirit drink, an aperitif that you will like, maybe even for your next birthday to surprise your, uh, your, your guests with. Now what you need is a huge balloon glass and fill that with an ice cube or if you have one, an ice ball. The good thing about ice balls is the fact that they, um, well, they take longer to melt. So they will dilute your drink not so fast. And then also, it's a good idea to have some frozen citrus fruit. Just some frozen uh, parts of lemon, parts of lime, works wonders. Anyway, uh, let's do this first. Get the ice ball in there. Now be careful because this is quite fragile in your glass. Beautiful, beautiful. Much better than ice cubes in my opinion. And then you add three centimeters of the Nuglin single malt. There we go. In this case, it's batch four, but that does not really matter all that much. You can use whatever batch you like. And then you top this off with three centiliters of the Nuglin Botanical Spirit. What? Nuglin Botanical Spirit? What is this? Oh, hang on to your horses. We'll try this in a second. I'll talk about you. I'll talk to you about the Botanical Spirit in a minute. So three centiliters of the Botanical Spirit three centimeters of the single malt and then you add a bit of the frozen fruit so I've got me some frozen lime and lemon the fact that it's frozen will only help to release the flavors even even quicker than you would imagine have a bit of this have a bit of that not too much it's it's not just garnish it also adds a bit to the flavor in fact so make sure you freeze that beforehand beautiful all right then we need a tonic, but I would like to be, I would like this to be a neutral tonic. So it's, it's, it's like a bit of a, uh, an alternative gin and tonic. Sure. Yeah. It's a single malt gin and tonic. Well, it's not really gin, it's a botanical spirit. Anyway, a flavor, a, a tonic, sorry, a tonic that is quite neutral in flavor. Uh, so in my case, I will use the Fever Tree Indian Tonic, the original, the gold label. Let me put it that way. Now you want to pour this over a bar spoon. So very gently, uh, the reason for that is that you want to keep all those bubbles from your tonic fresh and lively. There you go. Well, you don't really need a spoon if you don't have one or if you don't have a bar spoon. Any regular spoon will do, of course. Uh, what we need to uh, finish it off is a lemon wheel. Looks good. So you just slice off a lemon wheel. And there you go. Let me put that on top and then take a regular straw, preferably a brightly colored straw, the one that you can, you know, and cut it off at an angle, just underneath the part where you would normally be able to, uh, to fold it. And this you can discard, you don't know what will leave this. This one goes in there. And that, my friends, is a very easy, easy to make. I'm no mixologist, I'm no bartender, but I do like a good drink once in a while. This is what I call my Nobleam. So the Nuknean Botanical Spirit. Many new distilleries, they create a spirit or a gin, you know, to pay for the first years, to keep the money flowing while their whiskey matures for three years. It takes three years before they can bottle their uh, spirit as whiskey. So many of them resort to gin or spirits or whatever. Now, in the case of Nuknean, they created this one, the Nuknean Botanical Spirit. It is not a gin, mind you. This is a spirit that they have created together with um, well, what they do is they, they ship off their uh, new make to another distillery in the neighborhood called the, uh, what's their name, I have to think, Bean and Turek, Bean and Turek, something like that. It means the hill of the wild hog. It's a craft distillery as well that you may have heard of because they do produce the, uh, the Kintyre gin, for example. It's a young upstart as well. They were, they were founded in 2016. Anyway, what Nukneum does is ship off their new make to this Bain and Turek distillery, where it is again distilled, making this a triple distilled spirit, uh, but with some botanicals. And some of the botanicals are listed on the uh, on the backside of the bottle. You have like 
Um, what's it say? Here, here we go. It's uh, no less than 10 botanicals, including sorrel, heather, thyme, grapefruit, wild bog, myrtle, well, just, to, just to, to name a few. And it is bottled in these 500 milliliter bottles, half liters, and bottled at 40% ABV. Only five bottles were created, 5,000 bottles were created for this batch. Clear, obviously, because it has not yet kissed any wood and it is bottled at 40% ABV on the nose. Well, it's clearly not a gin indeed, because the typical gin notes, juniper berry, are, are, are completely absent here. This is more like, like nosing a spicy new make, or a herbal new make. It's beautiful though, I get this fresh touch of nuts and some, some sweetness, a clear hint of citrus, and there is even that's a bit, a bit funny. Some coconut milk on the one hand and a slight sea breeze on the other. This is quite beautiful actually. I love it on the palate. Mm. Creamy and bright. It's a bit sweet and sour at the same time. I get some grapefruit again, which I really like. Uh, but I also get some, some Mm, berries, a touch of pepper, it's a bit feisty and again this is lovely in its own right but as it says on the bottle it clearly states here on the top it says that this is perfect with tonic so looks like we have another cocktail coming up. Now the cocktail that I would like to make is indeed with tonic but not just you know, it's not going to be a gin tonic like thing, it's going to be something special. What I need is a wine glass, which I will fill with some fruit. Red and blue fruit that I have frozen beforehand. Freezing beforehand has two advantages. One, it's ready. Two, you don't need any ice. Ice will only dilute your, uh, your drink any, uh, your, your drink further. So, and if, if it's only such a small drink that you are preparing, just add some frozen fruit. It looks great, oops, it looks great, and moreover, it'll taste great as well, and you do not need any ice cubes. How, how about that? All right, what we do then is add some of the botanical spirit. Now you can use a jigger to add 3%, uh, three centiliters, I'm sorry. What you can also do is just pour from your wrist. You know, you know, you know how much you like, right? Uh, now mind you, I do, I do promote responsible drinking. I'm all for responsible drinking. In fact, I know I drink a lot, but I'm never ever drunk. I promise you, I'm never ever drunk. It's, it's the truth, it's the God honest truth. The, in fact, I despise drunk people. They, you never know what you're gonna get with drunk people. So, no, I do like my drinks, definitely I do, as you all know. And um, I'm known for being someone who likes to experiment with drinks, as you can see right here, but you will never catch me drunk. Oh, I might be tipsy from time to time, but drunk? Not ever. And I will never drive a car, and neither should you. So like I said, responsible drinking. Back to the cocktail. What I would like to add here is the Fever Tree Mediterranean, because it's got a bit of spices in there as well, making it more apt for what we're looking for than the regular gold label Fever Tree, the regular Fever Tree. Right, again, we take our spoon to make sure that the bubbles are kept intact. Go. Will you look at that color? And as you can see, my drink gets its beautiful color because of the frozen fruit. Immediately the frozen fruit delivers these colors and you'll have some of the berries go down, some of the berries stay on top, creating this beautiful, beautiful cocktail. What we need to finish things off is to, you know, garnish it just a tiny wee bit, making it beautiful. There we go. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call my Look red and blue. Cheers. So as you can see, this botanical spirit is quite versatile. In fact, Nuknien did something extra. They actually shipped off their uh, botanical spirit and had it barrel aged and they sold them in these these beautiful boxes, three little bottles of 200 milliliters each, in which the Nukmian Botanical Spirit was barrel aged. We've got the first one, which is bourbon barrel aged for 110 days. 
The second one is Mondino Barrel Aged for 60 days and the third one is Vermouth Barrel Aged for 60 days. Now let's take a look at these three as well, shall we? We'll start with the bourbon. Now the, the spirit that matured on the bourbon cask did this for 110 days. Bright golden color, well it's, it's even, that's not bright golden, that's, that's like white wine almost. Very clear, 110 days and this is bottled at 40% ABV on the nose. Well that fresh spirit shines through but already it is beautifully wrapped in, in some sweet notes of butter, coconut, some light brown sugar, beautiful, fresh. It's creamy and surprisingly sweet. I get some pineapple, some coconut, citrus zestiness. Mmm, it's fresh and this again will do quite well in a cocktail, I think. Hold that thought on the finish. It's long and spicy and a bit warming. Well, it's quite quaffable as is, but it's made for a cocktail. Now for this cocktail, we again need a big balloon glass with an ice ball. I've already explained to you that the ice ball is actually better than ice cubes for the simple fact that it doesn't melt as fast as an ice cube, thus not diluting your drink, yet keeping it nicely cool. What I need here is cranberry juice. Cranberry juice to give it a beautiful color and a sweet note. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add 200 milliliters of cranberry juice that beautiful color and then add 300 milliliters or three centiliters of the botanical spirit from Lupnian that was bourbon aged, bourbon barrel aged. Now look at that. Oh, the smell. If, if you could smell this, this is beautiful. But what I need to top it off now is bubbles. Now that can be either champagne or cava or prosecco, whatever you have in the neighborhood. I have just bought this bottle of cava, the Spanish champagne, so to speak, in the local supermarket, and that's what I'm going to need to top things off. Hang on a second. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. There we go. All right. Whew. All right. Now, don't overdo it. You only want to fill your glass halfway. Otherwise, there will be just too much champagne. Put it over your ice ball, and that's all you need. There you go. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. The perfect thing about this cocktail is that it is sweet enough for the ladies, feisty enough for the gents, and festive enough for everyone in between. Just add a slice of pink grapefruit to add a bit of garnish, don't overdo it. And that, my friends, is all that you will need for a beautiful, what I call, fizzy red. Cheers. The second botanical spirit that is barrel aged is this one on a Mondino cask for 60 days. Again, bottled at 40%. Now, Mondino is the name of a famous uh, Amaro from Germany, which is actually produced at the uh, Schnitzel Distillery in Traunstein in Germany after an old Italian recipe. In fact, Amaro is the Italian word for bitter. It's a liqueur that is made from uh, oranges, rhubarb, and lots of spices, making it a bitter liqueur indeed. And then it gets its final character from maturing on oak casks. And it's on such a cask that this Lupnian Botanical Spirit has aged for 60 days. Bottle that 40% ABV on the nose. Oh, this is very good. This is very good. It reminds me a bit of an orange liqueur. Well, duh. <laughs> but with candied sugar, some bergamot, and a wonderful bitterness. This is good on the palate. Mmm. Very creamy, bittersweet, 
It's closer to Cointreau than it is to, to, to a gin or, or a whiskey. Oh, but it's very good indeed. It evolves towards pink grapefruit, and I absolutely love it. I'll finish that. Medium long finish. Again, well, like I said, I'm no mixologist, nor a bartender. I'm just a guy who likes to experiment and fool around with, with, with spirits and stuff to create a, uh, a nice cocktail. And it does not always have to be very difficult. What I have in mind for this Mondino is very, very straightforward indeed. In fact, my next cocktail is probably the easiest to set you've ever made. glass in the fridge the night before. I use this one that, that, I, that I brought with me from a, a, a holiday in the United States, Hard Rock Cafe San Francisco. So a frozen glass and a beer. Add three centiliters of the Nucleum Botanical Spirit, don't overdo it, and then, oh I need, sorry, hang on. <laughs> and then add an IPA. Now for this IPA, I selected the Brewdog Elfie's Juice for the simple reason, this IPA has a grapefruit infuse. It's been infused with grapefruit. Ah, oh, will you look at that? Will you look at that? Oh my God, oh. Mm. Life is good. And this, my friends, is what I call a dandy shag. The third and final barrel-aged spirit from Lutnian is this one on a vermouth cask. It matured for 60 days and is bottled at 40% ABV once again. Now vermouth is a fortified wine, an aromatic wine. It works wonders in a cocktail. If you're not very familiar with it, when I say Martini Rosso, you will all go, ah, that's vermouth, indeed. A very aromatic wine indeed. And it's quite affordable as well. If you look in a supermarket, you will find vermouth, oh, very, very affordable indeed. So that is vermouth. It's the darkest spirit of the three, as you can see, on the nose. Well, the spirit is very hard to recognize. The vermouth here is very overpowering indeed. It offers, it offers aniseed, balsamico, and I even get some chicken spices. That's weird. But already my my saliva glands are going like, taste it already, taste it, taste it, taste it now! Here we go. Mm. Bittersweet, but bitter twist. It's almost like I can taste the wood, but it works. It's quite, quite herbal too. All kinds of green garden herbs, like, like rosemary and thyme. I get some ginger as well. This is, this is quite nice on the finish. Spicy and medium long. Now you would think that I would go for a, uh, a, a Negroni or a Martini with this vermouth barrel botanical spirit, but I've got something else in mind. No siree for this cocktail, I'm going back to the basics and you can curse all you want, but you know, you all love a good whiskey cola. <laughs> a nice ball again, I'm not going to explain why, you already know this, and then add a good dollop of the botanical spirit vermouth, around three centiliters, more or less, from the wrist. And then I have these Coca-Cola signature mixers, but the one I will be choosing is this one, the spicy, for the simple fact that the spicy also contains lime, ginger, rosemary, Thyme, jasmine, and jalapeno. Yeah, that's the one I want. Where is my. Oh, sorry. Is, okay. So I go for the spicy. I've tried it with the other ones as well, but the spicy works best. So that's the one I will be using today. Just put it over the ice bowl. That means you will keep your, uh, your bubbles intact. And then top it off again with 
the frozen citrus fruit that you have from before, some frozen lime and frozen lemon, just to garnish it a little and give it that citrusy twist on the nose. When you put your glass up to your nose, you will smell this beautiful citrusy touch. And that, my friends, is the uh, cochlean. Now, feel free to pronounce this the cochlean. See what I did there? Nuknean, Cooknean? Well, if I have to explain it, it's not funny, but it sure as hell is very, very tasty. Cheers. All right, I've got one more treat for you. One more treat, a cocktail with all three of them. Now, this may take a little bit more preparation and you will need a little bit more of uh, tools, so to speak. Like, for example, you're gonna need a shaker. Well, if you've got a Tupperware box that you can close, that will work just as fine. You're gonna need a strainer. I've got this sieve, it'll, it'll, do the, it'll do the job. A bar spoon, but truth be told, any spoon will do. You just need to, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a friggin' spoon, right? And uh, you will also be needing some Liquid, liquid um, uh, honey, some bitters, and of course, a lemon and a pink grapefruit. That's what we're gonna need to produce a little bit of a special cocktail right now. So what we're gonna do first is we put into our uh, um, shaker, 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 two centiliter of each of these spirits. You do not want to overdo it. Two centiliters of each is more than enough because in any cocktail, the maximum amount of um, alcohol in there should be seven centiliters, no more. This is, it's supposed to be a lovely drink, a part to drink, something to feast on, not something to get you drunk quickly, right? Remember what I told you about responsible drinking. Enjoy your drinks, but don't overdo it. Don't overdo it and don't get drunk. And after what you've had one of these, don't drink and drive. Right, okay, two centimeters of each. The next thing you want to do is get a, um, uh, some, some um, citrus, lemon, lemon, lemon juice in there. Just squeeze it in there. We need about, just squeeze half the lemon in there, all the lemon juice. I don't care how you do it, just make sure you have all this beautiful, fresh lemon juice in there. Now, before you go squeezing the uh, pink grapefruit, the first thing you need to do is keep your garnish. So, uh, what is it, what is it? This is what I need. This is what I need. First, get a bit of the zestiness of the pink grapefruit because that's what you're going to need to uh, garnish your glass afterwards. So let's see if I, I'm not very handy at this, am I? Let me just see if I can get a beautiful piece of the zestiness of the pink grapefruit. Right there, there we go. That's okay. And another one. That's okay. And once you've done that, put these aside because you're going to need them afterwards. Squeeze the pink grapefruit juice in there. Squeeze it in your, in your, ah, in your shaker. Go for it. All that beautiful, fresh pink grapefruit juice. This is absolutely stunning. Oh, the smell. If videos could convey smell, this is already, oh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. This, this may, this may become just a tiny bit messy, but that's all right. That's all, and I'm not talking about the football player, obviously. I'm talking about the fact that you're going to have to clean up your kitchen and uh, wifey may not be very happy, but hey, we're having a ball. Right, uh, we need uh, a good squeeze of honey. Honey, we need the honey. Just a good squeeze, about five milliliters will do the trick. So if you have liquid honey, that's very helpful. There we go. Hooray, that will give it a nice sweet twist. Lovely, lovely. Okay, and then finally, some bitters. Now, most of you will probably have those Angusta bitters, the, the, the fancy bottles where you can go for three dashes. I don't have those fancy bottles, but I do have some, uh, some bitters here in, in. So I'll just use my spoon and get some bitters in there as well. Don't overdo it. This is more than enough. This is more than enough. There we go. That's the bitters done. Seconds. Everything is in here. 
like you mean it. Go for it. 15 seconds of shaking. More than enough. Then, get a tumbler glass, or in my case, I've got this beautiful Duval glass. Duval is a famous Belgian beer, but it will, it, it, it'll serve my purposes. This is a beautifully shaped glass. This is exactly what I need. What I'm gonna do is first, I'm not going to explain again, an ice ball. Did you know, by the way, that if you use boiled water, you will get ice cubes that are absolutely crystal clear. You can see right through them. So it's a bit it's a bit strange to first boil water and then try to make ice cubes out of them, but it makes them crystal clear. As you can see, I could not be arsed. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just at home. I'm not in a fancy bar or anything. This is just my kitchen, so this will have to do. All right, so an ice ball goes in there, and this is tricky. Now you have to sieve your drink. So that's where, where this one comes in. That makes for the fact that my drink will remain beautifully, beautifully. No, no, no pith of the of the pink grapefruit or, or citrusy notes or anything like that. And to top it off, you take the vermouth again. The vermouth is so versatile. And just pour a tiny bit of vermouth on top of that. There we go. And then squeeze your Orange, uh, your, what am I saying? Orange, is this an orange? Is this is a pink grapefruit. Squeeze this pink, the pink grapefruit on top because that releases all the oils in the skin of your grapefruit and then the, the top of your glass will be, will be sprinkled in these oils that you cannot see but you will, you will, you will sense them once you put your uh, uh, glass to the nose. I've got two squeezes. Give it a bit of squeezes. Drop it in there. there. And then, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I call the try it at home. My try it at home cocktail. And that, my friends, is all for this whiskey rambling. And I hope to see one of Mark's whiskey ramblings real soon. And until then, may the mob be with you. Cheers.